Hello everyone. First Peter 3:18 to 19. It's a passage where people appeal to to try and claim that when Jesus died, he went and preached to the dead, essentially. Preached to the spirits in prison, which most people will take to be Hades. And so the idea is that Jesus died while well, his body was hanging dead on the cross. He, in his spirit, went and preached to, to spirits in prison. Which the implication of that would be is that there's nobody on the cross once this occurs. There's just a personless body there. And Jesus didn't become dead, but remained alive. And so nobody was dead for your sins. And nobody was put in a tomb. And the Bible says otherwise. Jesus was in the tomb. Jesus was hanging dead on the cross. Nevertheless, despite all those facts, people want to have, have this belief that this is what happened when Jesus died. So let's just read it here. I think this is the RSV. I can't remember where I got this translation. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison. And so people imagine this language means that after Jesus died, he was a disembodied spirit, who went and preached to the spirits in prison, and that's usually taken to refer to Hades, the realm of the dead, in which people imagine this is a realm of disembodied souls and or spirits in Trinity world. However, there is really a pile of biblical facts that tell us otherwise. For example, when Jesus was dying, he said this, and Jesus crying out with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So this tells you that Jesus wasn't a spirit that headed off yonder to Hades. He was a dead man hanging on a cross who committed his spirit to his God and Father. Just as we read at James 2.26, the body without the spirit is dead. You're a dead human. So let's focus on these words here, in the spirit, because that's really where the problem is. Being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Notice the difference in some of the translations. Some of the translations have this referring to the Holy Spirit, such as the KJV and the NIV. Also notice how it says he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. So somehow Trinitarians read this in a non, you know, kind of a muddled way. Jesus put to death in the flesh, but made him alive in the spirit. But when he was dead in the spirit, he preached the spirits in heaven. So they got him being put to death in the flesh, made alive in the spirit, but preaching the spirits when he's dead. But it's already told you he was made alive in the spirit. Why do Trinitarians read this as if it said being put to death in the flesh but remained alive in the spirit in which he went to and preached to the spirits in prison? 
when it actually says this, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Made alive. And when you look at this closely, it's pretty easy to see what Peter's talking about. Paul says something similar at Romans 1.4. Jesus was fixed Son of God in power by the resurrection from the dead according to the Spirit of Holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord. And again, he says at 2 Corinthians 5, 4-5, For indeed while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us, gave to us the Spirit as a pledge. So what Paul is talking about there is we have this pledge of the Spirit, this deposit of the Spirit, looking ahead forward to the resurrection when, when we're going to be made alive in the Spirit, in our resurrection bodies. And again at Romans 8.23, he says something similar. And not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of the body. That's also why Paul says we no longer know Christ according to the flesh. His crucified body was clothed and consumed by the Spirit of the living God. And so now Paul calls him life-giving Spirit, the risen Jesus. The Spirit is life, John 6.63 and Romans 8.10-11. So when you read Romans 8.23, remember what he says at Romans 8.10-11 about how the Spirit will give life to our mortal bodies, which is what Peter is talking about at 1 Peter 3.18 made alive in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which gives life to our bodies. That is how we are resurrected from the dead. It's how Jesus was resurrected from the dead. If you just look at the language here, it's obvious that it is the risen Christ doing the preaching. He was put to death in the flesh, but now he's made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison. He was put to death, but was made alive. Dying is being made alive? Is that what happens in your head in Trinity world? The crucified man, Jesus, was made alive in the Spirit of God, since it is the Spirit which gives life and gave life to his mortal crucified body. Notice how he's talking about Christ bringing us to God. Well, how did he bring us to God? He died to the flesh and was made in alive in the spirit. God is spirit. And so to bring us to God, we must be brought to God in the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that occurs in Christ because he was made alive in the spirit. So, when you look at what the NIV has here, um, it's quite interesting that they actually got it right for once. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. After being made alive. No disembodied spirit descending into Hades to preach to the dead. This is about a man who was put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit. The resurrected Jesus. It's talking about the resurrected Jesus making this proclamation. 
And that's why Peter also goes on to, to make the analogy about how all flesh was destroyed in the days of Noah, but eight souls were saved through water. And then Peter talks about how this is an analogy of baptism and how we are saved through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, this is how we're brought to God, through his resurrection life, the life of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's why Peter goes on to say what he does here. When you really sort of think about it, this, this, this claim is pretty, pretty pitiful. Um, the, the text is actually telling you what's going on. I mean, you don't even need to look anywhere else as far as understanding um, the fact that it's the risen Christ who proclaims to the spirits, put to death in the flesh, made alive in the spirit in which he preached the spirits. It's pretty plain. And that's how we're brought to God, which is what Peter is talking about. We're saved through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Sorry, there's no disembodied spirit here going to preach to the spirits in prison. This is 99% imagination, you know, and 1% blunder on the part of Trinitarians. God bless you.